none of these kids should be getting the media attention that we're getting. Like, on, we, we, we aren't experts. We don't have all the, the solutions. All right, glad to be with you. We don't have that much time because our next guest is a diva. Well, he's no David Hogg, I'll tell you that much. But <laughs> you can follow him on the Twitter at Kyle Kashev. Of course, a student at Stoneman Douglas High. A lot of people don't, a lot of people don't remember the high school. That's how quickly school, these yeah. news fleets. Uh, Parkland, Florida. Parkland, Florida. And uh, we had him on the show. And ever since then, he's now been gallivanting around with all, all the other important hosts and politicians. Nice. Kyle, how are you, sir? Good, good, good. How are you? Well, I'm, I would have been doing better if you'd have had a pair of headphones anywhere in your yeah, house. Sorry. <laughs> no. I feel like that's a, that was a power move. I don't do headphones. I don't. Kyle Kashev doesn't do headphones. Kyle Kashev doesn't do headphones. Maybe that's for that. that that's for those other kids at the town halls. How have you been doing? So you, I remember, you, you know, you, you you did our show. We talked uh -huh. about this quite. We talked about everything that had been going on. It was still really hot in the news. And ever since then, I, I've been seeing you, you everywhere. Well, yeah, we were ever in D.C. and I. Uh... I got I caught the flu from all meeting all the politicians. Yes, yes, it's called it's called the swamp flu. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's a particular strain, and uh, it, it it makes you aggressive uh, little bastard. Yeah, uh, for some reason you have you, you don't have it. You're fine. You have a healthy relationship with your wife. You get it. All of a sudden, you're hitting on men in stalls and truck stops. It's a very so, weird so flu. But who have you been? So first off, let me tell you. I've said this before. I'm very uncomfortable, generally speaking, with the idea of having anyone young kind of uh, uh, underage on the show because I hate how they're politicized in the media. But I do think there's a difference here because first off, you were kind of dragged into it a little unwillingly. You know, you wanted, and, and what you were doing is the other students were out there immediately on every single outlet that you, we could po you could possibly imagine. And all you said was like, ah, hold on a second. They, they don't speak for all of us. And so I think, okay, <laughs> since they're expressing an opinion for everyone, it's necessary to have a voice of reason uh, like yourself. So do you feel like uh, that's how most people see you? Do you feel you've been embraced at least as a, a voice of balance? Or how have you been perceived? I think that's, that's pretty much where I came into like the entire debate, as in, like, let's kumbaya this. <laughs> don't say And uh, let's find the middle ground. <laughs> and uh, so now, now it's, it's, it's basically when I came in because, A, it was representing the conservative point of view in the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. but but also finding the middle ground. We did find the middle ground, and while everyone was protesting and marching, we talked to legislators, and we got the Stop School Violence Act passed now into the House. That's going to hit the Senate, get on the omnibus, and pass the day before the march. Well, there you go. Because you, you so you met with some U.S. senators, right? I don't. Yeah, I don't remember that. I don't remember how many. It was so many. Oh. I don't remember. I don't remember how many senators <laughs> know, and the terrible. foie gras and the caviar. You can't imagine the money. I'm I'm all Kyle Kachow. This would have followed us. Uh, where are they? Um, so you met with them. What is this? What you're talking about now? You found a middle ground. What is what is the middle ground? Legislatively, what what, what are we looking at? And I know you've played an actor. I mean, role. I mean, it's clear that we're not going to pass anything that have with gun control. Okay. In the in like the Congress. Um, so practically it was everything that can be done preemptively to stop a shooter without like talking about gun control. Okay. Because I don't even think gun control is the issue in this debate. And it's clear, like looking factually, gun control won't solve anything. So what we push, we push the Stop School Violence Act, which, um, it, it lets teachers, it gives the funding, um, for better recognition of kids who do have these issues, better treatment of these kids, um, a better development of technology at schools itself and better communication between the FBI and the schools. Right, exactly. And that's important. And by the way, that doesn't even that doesn't necessarily get into the territory what you're talking about of hey, you uh, you took a, a Xanax, so now you can't buy a gun because of mental health issues. Because exactly. last time when we spoke, I was saying it was this idea was also way too broad, and we had we had to hone in a little bit on something specific. And and this seems like a this seems like a good start. And you're saying this is going to pass the day before the march, you believe? Uh, pr that if everything goes according to plan, it already passed the house. Practically unanimous vote. So what what will this do for uh, let's say uh, uh, let's walk us through a scenario. And I f first off, mm -hmm. I just find this. In <laughs> I don't know. Why I'm so tickled that 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 David Hogg is everywhere. He's like the NRA practically threatened us, <laughs> but because they say they don't like you, he's out there on every single uh, show. And at the same time, Kyle is here, and he actually has some legislation that might make it the day before the march, the day before the pi yeah. final PR stand. <laughs> <laughs> they might already be up Crap Creek. Um, so let's go through a specific example. Let's say a kid is really disturbed, exhibiting signs. Um, what would this legislation allow for, for example, or help with that wouldn't that we don't have right now in place? I mean, right now, right now, practically all the legislation that it does is that it allows it teaches teachers and um, officers and students how to properly identify these kids okay. and report them to the proper authorities. 
Because right now a teacher can't really do anything as of right now. And, and teaching and like educating these teachers on what to do when they do meet a kid who has these issues is, is a good step in the right direction. Because honestly, what happened at, at my school could have been av averted. Like it could have been made sure that it wouldn't have happened had like people followed the legislation in place already. Right. The, well, and, and now this is to strengthen that. So how do you identify yeah. someone, I guess? How do you, how do you ensure that it isn't, and I know, listen, I don't expect you to have all the answers because I know, listen, you're, 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 you're a younger chap. Well, no, um, no. What it does is it doesn't, it, here's the difference. It gives the funding to the states and then the states, it's up to the states to, to create the systems and to create the programs to teach the teachers. Okay. So like the federal government, what I've been like very supportive of, I don't want to see the federal government telling the states what to do. Mm -hmm. Right. I think this is up to the states. Yeah. So it gives the money to the states and then the states decide what they want to do with it. They, they decide in what different aspects of the bill the money needs to go to. Right. I can already see the backlash from that. We're going to go, well, look, this is going to this is going to be a problem. And states are going to just take that money and they're going to give it to their rich oil buddies. <laughs> that's that's what they're going to say. And then you're going to be on the hook for Halliburton, Kyle. Do you want to be on the hook for Halliburton? <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue what that is. Okay, all right. <laughs> I forgot the Bush the, the Bush years are, are, are foreign. Imagine that, growing up in America where you really didn't that remember. That is kind of crazy to Do me. you remember George W. Bush as president? Or is that where you just, were you too young to really no. remember that? No. Okay. No, I don't. Yeah. See, I grew up, and that was my high school years, where you probably grew up in the high school years where everything Barack Obama did was amazing. I grew up in the high school years where oh, no. everything George W. Bush did, just everyone was like, what an idiot. idiot. <laughs> oh, he doesn't know anything. And then uh, Barack Obama happened, and I was out of high school, and I no longer wanted to swallow a knife every day. So I, one thing, though, it, it does that I get concerned about is we talk about like identifying students. Listen, high school, for a lot of people, can be a really, really depressing place. So how, yep. how <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there you go. So I imagine you've run into it. So how do you, you know, you, how do you differentiate or how, how do we expect them to be handling reporting different, you know, a, a kid who just says like, oh man, I hate my life. Oh, I'd rather die than take the math test versus some kid who's like, this is the, these are the school plans and we're gonna make sure I wear this vest. You know, how, how do we make sure that the, it's differentiated and not used as a tool, right? Where you just go, hey, that kid is, could shoot up the school and then he gets on a crap list. I honestly, I honestly don't know how they would identify a kid who's not because it's, it's really like, it's a speci very specific matter. It's the same thing of like having the legislative and saying, that if you're mentally like disturbed, you shouldn't be able to acquire a weapon. It's the same debate of like being able to properly identify the person and not like overreact. And I don't know. So this is more so about correcting the breakdown in communication that happens between like like a state level. You know, they don't really have. No, it's about what every state deems necessary, what deems like what they want to do to ensure this won't happen again. Yeah. In like in like a very like subset group of what they're allowed to do, and it's very broad. The group they can like choose to go in like technology. They can choose to um to better the communication between the FBI. They can work on like apps of reporting. It's all up to the states. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, we've seen it when when uh, I mean states with education tend to do better than one big federal bureaucracy in Washington D.C. You know what I love is I just asked you a, a specific question, and you said I don't know. You know who would never say I don't know? David Hogg. David Hogg. Have you ever heard David Hogg say <laughs> I don't know? I don't think anyone has really followed up on any questions. That's actually okay. That's a good. Say. That's what we call a segue, Colin. You didn't even realize, because that was going to be my next question. Do you see um, any specific plans, other than NRA sucks and ban all semi-automatic weapons like we saw at the CNN town hall, do you see mm -hmm. any concrete legislative plans uh, mm -hmm. from your peers, people like David Hogg, people who are in the No, no, this is the exact thing happened in school. I talked to kids, like, hey, look, 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 you're right, okay. Tell me anything you want, but what do you propose? And none of them gave me anything. None of them. I talked to like so many peers today and I'm like, look, what do you propose? Like, what do you want to do? Like, even if I don't agree with you, just what do you want to see happen? And none of them gave me an answer. And like, it's, it's practically the same thing with the march. Two different things with the march. Um, there are people in the march that say that we don't want to take away your guns. I remember David Hawk saying we don't want to take away your guns. But specifically on the website, if you, if you, can, if you can pull it up right now and scroll down, it says that yeah. no one should be able to have an assault rifle. So there is a gun agenda going on here, and it is quite a, a somewhat of an anti-gun march. Right. It's like no one wants to take and, guns. And I don't see any guy. actual <laughs> legislative changes other than that that are they're actually being pushed. All I hear is is marching. Marching is fine if you if for activism and raising raising awareness. But if you actually want legislative change, you talk to the legislators and you propose something. Nothing is being proposed. Right. 
Uh, that's a really that's a really interesting point. <laughs> First off, when you say you spoke with people today, I know it wasn't David Hogg because I saw him on the telly. So I know that he's not there. He's too. He's he's basically tutored on set. <laughs> <laughs> It's like Leonardo DiCaprio and what's eating Gilbert Grape. He's just on set, and he's like, all right, I'll, I'll just get my GED. I've got bigger things to do. No, that's a good point, because then they said, we don't want to take away your guns, just assault rifles, well, uh, just assault weapons. Well, what's an assault weapon? And then you look into legislation, and it's, it's basically all weapons other than revolvers and pump-action shotguns. It's every hand, it's every double-stack Glock, it's every Walther, our sponsor there, that you would use for personal defense outside of the P. It's, it's, it's yep. the majority, or certainly a plurality. No, I would actually absolutely say majority, definitely definitively, majority. majority of guns that people would use for self-defense. So there you go. That's exactly the point. They just also, what defines an assault rifle? Like, you tell me what defines an assault rifle. It doesn't mean anything. Well, they, I think they just say assault weapons, not oh, even assault rifle. Because assault no, rifle... No, they say weapon of war. They yeah. Say weapon of war. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And by the way, I know about the war because I've been, ta I've been tattered by the war of dead Johnny Mathis and hey, Don Lemon on CNN. Look at all these, look at all these mean tweets. Look at all these, these mean, mean tweets. tweets. The NRA threatened Skies. to kill me. No, wait, hold on a second. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure no one threatened to kill you. They just said that you were wrong. Ah! <laughs> um, sorry, I know you have to go back to school with him. But, you know, it's, 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 um, it's uncomfortable. And this is what I, what I said. There's a very different approach. You get asked a question. You say, well, I don't know. David Hogg knows everything, only there's no actual legislation. There are no propositions there, whereas you've met which, with legislators. It is a quintessential example. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd further on that. I'd further on saying that, especially in the town hall, that yeah. no one furthered up on the questions. When people said like stuff that were like outrageous, no one followed through saying like, no, that's not true. And then like they say false, falsehoods on live television, no one follows through or like questions them yeah. at all. Yeah, I, well, that's a good that's a good point because they tried to say that that uh, I remember Dana Lash didn't do that where she uh, I, what's the name of the girl looks like the uh, the Minority Report Oracle shaved head mm. you know who I'm talking about she goes to your school you must Emma be. yeah you probably had a crush on her at one point so <laughs> the point is she was up there and she she goes <laughs> don't say no on air because her friends are gonna come after you the chain gang I think and jealous. and uh, <laughs> and so uh, she goes Dana Lash. What are, of the inner, I think she said Loesch, so she, you know she didn't even do her research on the name. She said, what are you going to do? Are you willing to stand up right now and say that no one should own semi-automatic? It was something broad enough where she basically included the word semi-automatic weapons. We can probably, people can go watch the clip. Not, and Dana, not, not fully semi-automatic? Yeah, yeah, not fully semi-automatic. And Dana Lash answered and said, listen, what happened here was a travesty. This should not have happened. This person definitely should not have had a firearm. So she was trying to find middle ground. And the girl goes, you're not answering my questions. Will you make sure that no one has access to a semi-automatic? And everyone started cheering. I'm going, hold on a second. She just actually answered your question about the Knicks background check, what went wrong here, all the red flags. But you're saying she's not answering your question unless she commits right there, taking an oath, you know, on the CNN uh, spec sheet uh, to ban all semi-automatic weapons and she doesn't know what semi-automatic is the leading questions there and they cheer but like you said no one ever questioned them on it no, I, I, and the, the like police the officer yeah, the, sh <laughs> the sheriff the sheriff I, the sheriff it would have been his job to say well hold on sorry sorry sweetheart what what you mean to say is you mean these high capacity specific rifles because because the gun i have on my hip here is not that's a semi-automatic so you don't mean to include that but no one followed up yeah do you follow up in, when you're at school though please tell me you do i, I think Wait, what do you mean like in school all the things that we can't say, that we can't follow up, do you do it for us? Like, do you walk in the hall and go, like, Oh, no, I don't. I haven't talked to, like, any really one of them, like, in school. What I do is I, like, debates with my friends. Like, not my friends, but kids in class. And my, my, they don't turn into debates with my friends. They're just straight up arguments and yelling because you can do that. <laughs> well, I appreciate but your character. With, like, kids in my class, before all this happened, I spoke with, okay, two kids from, like, two leaders from the Never Again movement. And they told me that they want to ban all fully automatic assault rifles. It advances 1934. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> and then they come out to me like, we, we want to ban all uh, all assault rifles, and they couldn't define what an assault rifle is or like which specific one. So like, it's an indication that they truly don't know right w what they're talking about. And then sp specifically at school, you know, um, I, I would talk to kids and I would say, look, you you what do you want to do? They're like, we have to ban assault rifles, and I, I hit them with the statistics, and then they're like, I don't like how you tweet, Kyle, and I was like, okay. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's like, well, hold on, so you're a dick. It's not what you All tweet, right. it's how you tweet it. Yeah, it's how you tweet it. Okay, how should I? You know what you do with that? Tell them, here's what you do. Repeat the fact and say, okay, uh, you know, 500,000 to 3 million defensive uses of firearms each year. The vast majority of public shootings not committed by rifles or quote-unquote yeah. assault weapons, of any, assault rifles of any kind. How should I tweet it? 
Ask them that next time. Yeah. I mean, you've been help. banned. I don't know if you can tweet. No, I can't tweet. I'm saying for you. you I'm living vicariously oh, okay. for you. I've I been banned. You asking me to give you advice. Yeah. No, I'm saying uh, just to oh, ask okay. them, say, how should I tweet it? And uh, okay. that's that's that. actually very... Yeah, they, they won't um, know what to say. They're probably going to say, gonna say, they probably would be like, don't tweet it. Exactly. So that's, that's that what it comes down to. They just don't want to hear different points of view, period. I mean, it, it like the biggest factual evidence that I just constantly say is that 3% of all gun crimes with an assault rifle, 68% of those are suicides, and, and the majority is gang violence and criminal activity. Right. Well, even so further, that, by the way... So that just even, isn't even an issue. And then you just say the same thing, the 1994 to 2004 assault rifles ban proved inconclusive for actually having a the Assault weapons ban. I hate to correct you, but because that's important, because assault rifle in the military meant a oh, rifle capable of burst fire. Assault weapons doesn't mean anything, and that includes handguns with you know, scary triggers. So they okay. say assault rifles, but the legislation is assault weapons, which would ban handguns as well. And that's the point. They okay. don't even care. They, because at the end game, if you look at the legislation, it's just, they want to ban handguns. Well, no, no, this is the 1994 to 2004. Yeah, it, was, it was assault weapons. Uh, weapons oh, it ban. was? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was really, really silly. It, it, it included all kinds of magazines. It, it, it affected handguns and everything as well. Um, okay. Let me ask you this. Since you've been on our show... What other programs, I know I've seen you in a few, but what other programs have reached out to you proactively to, you know, to get you to appear? I mean, practically everyone, yeah. practically everyone. Um, not in like, not in like big, big numbers, like for like big, big league media, oh, big you. league media. But, uh, <laughs> thank you. No, not you. I'm saying that. What Trump a cancel on that free mug we had sent out to uh, Mr. Kashev. Luck of my hair. I love you guys though. But, uh. No, no, no. We have to make sure that I pick the right interviews because I don't want to get like my uh, interview get it chopped up by right. some left wing interview and it looks like I don't know what I'm saying. Or okay, well that's it. interesting because you said pick the right interviews. So, but are you willing to do interviews with people who disagree with you? So long as it's well, yeah, definitely. Up? I did Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan was fun. <laughs> did you see okay. that? Well, no. Okay, tell us for those who don't know. Tell us how that went. I mean, it was two forty in the morning. I hadn't slept. I had like half a uh, what was it, Dr Pepper. And we just got on air, and then he just started like spouting all this like false, false information that was just like had like absolutely no substance to the debate. It was just like all random facts about how an eight-year-old girl shot her father because they gave her an Uzi machine gun <laughs> to shoot at a range, and she shot her father. And I'm like, what does this have to do with the actual debate? And then there was like other random facts that he kept on like shoving in there that had made like no sense. Yeah, like, well, that sounds like didn't weird. Help at all. Yeah. So I just, I was just like telling him like general facts that like just facts that are well known. Well, you know what's funny? Again, I, to draw this contrast because David Hogg is the dar darling of the left right now. Uh, okay, he doesn't do any voices of opposition as far as the programs, right? He does not. Oh, do I don't. Okay, well, like I mean that makes sense because they would actually like ask back follow up questions. Right, but I'm trying to I'm comparing it with you. Whereas on the flip side, you can see footage. You know, everyone did the crisis actor thing, which is totally obviously false. David Hogg is not a crisis actor, but the, they took that from footage of him going, uh, "Hold on, let me retake that." So he wants edited interviews with people who agree with him. You are like, I have to pick my interviews carefully. Now it's not like a paper champion picking people who aren't real contenders in boxing. He's saying I have to pick it carefully because I want to, I want to find people to disagree with. But I want to make sure they don't edit me out of context. Take cheap shots. It is a total 180 from David Hogg, and 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 this kid hogs the spotlight. <laughs> well, I can mess up really quickly and like screw everything up just by like saying one wrong line on live television. That's true. That's true. But I I, I appreciate your your your, uh, your your gonads and willing to stand in there with people who disagree with you. You know, if no none of these other kids are doing it. I think look, comment in the comment section, people who are watching this. Can we all agree? that none of the other kids are doing this? None of the other kids are going on at Pierce Morgan at 2.30 and making sure it's unedited? You're the only one, whether people agree or disagree with you, you're the only teenager from Parkland, Florida doing that. That's gotta feel good, right? I mean, it's fun. I, I mean, it's, I debate it like I debate like my normal friends at school. Yeah, well, that's I, I've only had one actual real debate. It was with Pierce Morgan. But I, I mean, I'd love to have more. I, I mean, if anyone asked me, would you like to go on CNN or do this or or actually like have a live interview, then sure. What about some kind of a town hall with you and uh, some of your co fellow classmates who've been making the rounds? Is, is, is there any possibility of that, of, since you all go to the same school, sitting down saying, no, let's, let's have a discussion of our own differing ideas, even if it's not? Well, that was like two things, two things happened with that. The first one was like Harvard invited absolutely everyone except me <laughs> for their discussion. And I was like, look, we're having a discussion. Uh, oops, let's not invite the one Republican from Stoneman Douglas. Right. Let's let's not do that. And the same thing was with Twitter. With Twitter, originally hadn't hadn't invited me to do like a live stream, 
which is like if you're having a live stream about Soman Douglas, at least invite one kid from the opposite opposite point of view. But um, I'm doing an interview with Twitter later on this week, I think. Okay, that's I got an interview, a live stream, a live stream. Okay, so but you weren't a part of that initial one that that was planned. No, no. So yeah, what's the discussion then? If you're not there, there is no discussion. It's just oh yeah, agree, yeah 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 here, here, here grumble grumble grumble. Yeah, I feel like if had I been there, it wouldn't have been a discussion. It would have quickly become a debate. Well, like no, I think you're pretty, uh, you know, you're agreeable. I don't think you're a contentious person. I just think you just dis you disagree with some of their views, and you're actually far more moderate probably than a lot of people like myself uh, are on the issue. So I, it certainly seems. I mean, if you look at even the senators you've met with, you have reached across the aisle. You didn't slam dunk yeah. the president and brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we met with senators because we had to, we had to be reaching. We had to reach across the aisle because right. this this act was like completely bipartisan. We have like this shouldn't be just be a Republican issue or a Democrat issue. Well, let me ask you this because David Hogg bragged about how he got a call from Donald Trump and he hung up on him, and they were on Bill Maher and his friend. I can't remember his friend. Uh, they both talked about Caspi? how yes, how yeah. they hung up on the president. So let me flip that. Let's say tomorrow you get a call from Elizabeth Warren or Debbie Wasserman sure. Schultz, or Bernie Sanders saying, like, hey, I'd like to, what would, would you hang up on them? I mean, we've been trying to contact Bernie Sanders, and he has not responded. And we also, we, we reached out to, to Hillary Clinton's daughter, um, Chelsea Clinton, mm -hmm. and we set up a meeting with her before all this had, like, two weeks ago, we're like, so then she, like, she spat out her book deal. Mm -hmm. But but we, we do want to meet with people across the aisle, and Bernie Sanders still hasn't responded. Just ding-dong dash him. He goes nuts. <laughs> Just order pizzas, and he's like, pizzas again! Son of a bitch! Um, well, I think it's another testament to, to Kyle's reaching across the aisles. It, it's a tweet of his that <coughs> impressed me uh, uh, was, he said, while I disagree with my classmates per, uh, propose on policy and politics, they're good people who have been trying to advocate for what they believe in. I just disagree with most of what they say, but attacking them as people is wrong. Dissecting their arguments is more effective. I think that's also a very unique tweet. For a kid for, his for age. For his age at that high school. At your age, I would have just been like, he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like him, he's a dick. <laughs> if I had Twitter... <laughs> I'll be back, I'm gonna laugh at my boobs. Yeah, I'm gonna go Twitter's to the boobs. Twitter is so cancerous. Twitter is so cancerous. The fact that you recognize that is, is already... You are, you are uh, very ahead of your time, sir. Um, I couldn't tell you, because I haven't been there in over a week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, I don't know. <laughs> What's it like out there? Can someone let me know? Yeah, now that is, that is a very different approach. Why do you think that is? Is that... Uh, yeah. Is that your is that your your padre or your madre? Yeah, that was my mom telling me we have to leave in like fifteen minutes. All right, okay. Well, we'll wrap this up because I don't want to get you in trouble with your mom. This is a bizarre no, interview. Time. Bizarre. This is bizarre, and it, this is an international incident, and a, a kid has been all over. And it's like my mom's gonna be. I mean, like honestly, like can, to be frank with you, Go. none of these kids should be getting the media attention that we're getting. Like, on we 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 aren't experts. We don't have all the, the solutions. Why are we like parading kids on CNN and why are we in ABC and for for what reason? Well, it's just pushing. because we're exploitative and we have no shame. Uh, well, that's true. <laughs> like, actually, I was waterboarded for ratings. No, here the reason why, like I said, is I agree with you, but unfortunately, they have already been thrust into the spotlight and they've said, "I speak for all of Stoneman Douglas," and so yeah. you're the only person saying, "Listen." I don't hate these kids. I don't wish them, but I don't agree with them and they don't speak for all of us. And so yeah. I don't have the luxury if someone like you exists of not hosting you. Well, yeah, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. I, there are definitely a bunch of Republicans at Stone and Douglas who aren't represented in the media. And I think saying, like, I don't say I speak for, um, for all Republicans or even for all of the kids at Stone and Douglas. No. And they're like, there are kids with like a variety of like viewpoints at Stone and Douglas. Yeah, I know. But it's, it's like the, it's a select group of people who have been like they kind of say that they represent everyone from Stone and Douglas, which isn't true. Exactly. These, well, this is like the left. They see everyone as a monolith, right? They say, okay, you're black. Okay, you're a woman. Okay, you're gay. Okay, you're at the you're in Parkland, Florida. It's like no, hold on a second. I'm a person and I have a different point of view. Just because David Hogg goes walks to the same homeroom class that I do doesn't mean that he agrees with me and everything. Wait, just because I'm black doesn't mean that I agree with everything that Whoopi Goldberg says. Wait, just because I'm gay doesn't mean that I think Liza Minnelli kicks ass. Okay, we have different opinions and that's okay. It's the same symptom. It's it's the we see. This here, this is why I, I very much appreciate you hosting. A couple of reasons. Let me list this. First off, you're very civil. Uh, you're able to have a dialogue and you're able to dissect ideas as opposed to just going after the person, which is very admirable in someone your age. You're also able to say you don't know. 
and then maybe you'll look into it more. Uh, you also understand that people are individuals and don't claim to speak for everybody. These are very, very, these are very different from how the left see people. <laughs> taking, you are the, of these kids, you are the one taking personal responsibility, getting active, approaching legislators, actually trying to create real change, which may happen before mm -hmm. the march, which I just find hysterical. <laughs> um, you're the kind of guy who people should want. If they're, gonna, if they're going to exploit having a high school kid on, they should say, they okay. They should exploit me. Yeah, they should exploit you. They should, they, should, they should say at least this kid is the kind of kid who we know is mentally stable enough to handle an interview as opposed to someone who's just going, me, 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 limelight, limelight, limelight. Um, it's, the, it's the unwilling kind of hero. So I, I hope other people see the difference between you and, and the leftists. From I mean, we're actually doing something good. Like we're, we're actually pushing something versus just marching in the streets. Marching is fine. Like you can march all you want, but that's not going to change the legislators' opinions. I think what we managed to accomplish is quite amazing. Well, I, I hope that, listen, I hope that you do. And I mean, I've talked about baby steps. Um, you saw what happened in Maryland today. Uh, where the officer shot the gunman. You know, it's one of those things you can't... And that kills the entire narrative of not having guns at school, and I love that because <laughs> someone with a gun stopped the bad guy with the gun, and that's what needs to happen at our school. And it's like, look, this man actually did the job he was paid to do versus waiting outside and being a coward. And guns at schools are actually a good thing. <laughs> yes, well, it, exactly. Uh, well, uh, to be fair, they were waiting in their Lamborghini over there. At, you know, if I if I had those if I had those bucket seats, I wouldn't leave them for a while. They're hard to get out of too. Um, no, that's a good point. And here's the thing: it doesn't. They go, well, that's a trained police officer. Well, hold on, we had trained officers in your situation who didn't do what they were supposed to do. We have people who get their concealed carry. A, far less likely to commit crimes. They're far more trained in firearms than the average person, and at least it gives you a fighting shot. I say. I don't want to mandate that all teachers carry firearms, but if a teacher can carry a firearm at a Denny's or anywhere else because he's gone through the class, he has the permit, he should be allowed to protect himself and his students at school. And we see that today, even if it's an officer, the only thing that stops the bad guy with a gun is yep. a good guy with a gun. Even like if the gun isn't going to magically disappear. Like no one's going to stop the shooter. Someone has to stop the shooter. Right. And then when people, I, don't know, I was going to say this before you said this, but did you try yeah, I find it funny how like people like Bernie Sanders are calling for like gun reform, and then it's like, look, if you want to take away guns, then give up your armed security. Right. No, you're you're exactly right. And by the way, the gun that the gun that the police officer used, guarantee you that would be an assault weapon yeah. because the magazine capacity would put it under that category. Have you yeah. have you have you tried darting into the uh the, the the hallways and offering a buyback program? Yes. Perhaps have you tried guns. that? Next time, yeah, just offer a buyback. That's how they do it. That's, that's, that's tell, tell them it's mandatory. That'll get them. It's mandatory. Exactly. It's a mandatory buyback. I'm sure the, the, the gunmen's from here forth, from henceforth, will abide. Turn that AR into some art. It's like it's also hypocritical. They're like, give, give us, trust the government even more. Give us, give away your guns. Trust the government. But the government failed us on so many different levels. So it's like, trust the government more, even after they failed. Well, uh, people need to see the hypocrisy. I don't know that we need to trust the government. And David Hogg might not be the hero we need. <laughs> But the one we deserve. The one we deserve. Uh, Kyle, <laughs> I know you can't get I would love to have the kid on my show. Good luck with that. Uh, where's the best place for people to find you and follow this legislation that you've been working on and meeting with politicians? Where's the best place? Uh, Twitter. So at Kyle Kishu. At Kyle Kishu. Well, that, that, that bars me from the equation. I can't follow you. So I don't want to get you in trouble with your mom. But, Kyle, I really appreciate you uh, coming on the program. Keep us Thank updated. You. And, man, keep up the good fight. I know high school can I'll be hit great. you up on Twitter. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. All right, hang up on him, you smart ass. Hey, did you like this video? Of course you did. Unless there's something wrong with you, in which case you can comment below. What's your problem with this video? We want to hear from you, and we promise you 100%, I give you, my word is my bond, will answer every single negative comment. Uh, for those who are normal, you can leave a thumbs up and subscribe.